So the official spoiler season for Dominator United is finally here. And with that, well, a, a lot of cups of coffee for me in the future, I am sure. And also confirmation that apparently uh, that the leaked version of Shieldred with Shieldred Insidious Conqueror is, um, well, a uh, fake. So um, ignore that. Because on this episode, we're going to be talking about the brand new Shieldred. So now with all that said, let's jump into it. And my goodness, what a shield rid it is with shield rid the apocalypse. I mean, this is shield rid, uh, I believe, attached to a Phyrexian dreadnought, which is just ridiculous. Now, being attached to a, a Phyrexian dreadnought, you might think that uh, shield rid would have, you know, like 12 power, but apparently not. Apparently, the Phyrexian dreadnought is weaker with shield rid attached, being a 4 5, but still a 4 5 Phyrexian Praetor with death touch for just two black, black, and of course. Like every other Praetor, including the original Shieldred, you are given a major benefit and your opponents are punished for basically the exact same thing. And in this case, it is whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. Whenever an opponent draws a card, they lose two life. Now, that is quite painful for your opponents and very enjoyable for you. I mean, just even going to your draw step, you're like, oh, lovely, I drew a card and I gained two life. So you can just pad your life total very quickly with this commander. I mean, this commander, again, at four mana is pretty low to the ground. And of course, while you are, you know, looking forward to your draws and you're padding your life total, your opponents aren't going to be looking forward to theirs because they're going to be punished every single time they draw a card. Two life for each card is a ton. So yeah, this is quite a powerful commander, quite a brutal commander, and one that can take your opponents out incredibly quickly. And in fact, there is even, I, I'm, I'm not going to call it a combo, but basically a combo with this commander that can just take a player out in one shot very easily. And of course, we'll get to that and all the other fantastic cards that work with this incredibly brutal commander. Right after I remind you that in these quick takes in the description below, there is going to be a link to the list of the cards I talk about on this episode. Because if you are interested in a commander like this one and you want to build around it, well, sometimes when a commander is spoiled and it's one that might become incredibly popular, well, certain cards that work well with it might go up in price quite quickly. Yes, even before the set comes out. So make sure you check out that link below. And now with all that said, let's jump into it. So, first up, I mean, Shieldred is basically an Underworld Dreams, essentially. Well, okay, an Underworld Dreams with also the benefit for you and, you know, more of a downside for your opponents. Uh, but, okay, it definitely took inspiration from Underworld Dreams, okay? And, and now I'm rambling and this is how quick takes work because I've got to do these episodes pretty quickly because the card just came out, okay? And now I'm rambling further. Anyways, Underworld Dreams is an enchantment for black, black, black. And it says, when an opponent draws a card, Underworld Dreams deals one damage to that player. Obnixilus the Hate Twisted is a somewhat similar card. It's a Planeswalker. Walker with five starting loyalty. Whenever opponent draws a card, Obnix lets the Hate Twisted deals one damage to that player and minus two destroy target creature. Its controller draws two cards. And yeah, we'll get back to that one really quick in a second. But yeah, Fate Unraveler is another example of an Underworld Dreams type of card. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Fate Unraveler deals one damage to that player. So obviously cards like, you know, the new Shield Rid have been around, or at least the concept for punishing your opponents for drawing cards. And yeah, in a game of, you know, Commander, players love drawing cards, especially, you know, that blue player at the table or, you know, Simic player at the table, basically the same thing. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be drawing a ton of cards. And this says, okay, if you are drawing cards, you got to pay the price. And with these on the battlefield on top of your commander, that is going to be incredibly brutal. Obviously, it's just adding to it. I mean, okay, yes, damage is technically different than life loss, but basically the exact same thing in this situation for the most part. But yeah, basically three life loss for each card drawn is incredibly brutal. And of course, on the other end, you're still gaining life. And of course, Obnixilus itself, if you can protect, it can be quite brutal as well. That minus two takes out one of their creatures and gives them two cards to draw. Here, I got this gift for you. Oh, you just lost six life because of that. So yeah, I think cards like these would fit very well into a Shieldred the Apocalypse deck. Moving on, some other cards that you're definitely going to want to consider for this deck are cards like Howling Mind, Temple Bell, and Font of Mythos. Who says you can't do Group Hug and Mono Black? 
oh, okay, it's not really, you know, group hug because you're, you know, benefiting. Uh, I mean, you are benefiting everyone with cards like these. Anyways, Howling Mind says, at the beginning of each player's draw step, Howling Mind is untapped. The player draws an additional card. So you're just benefiting everyone, right? You're saying, hey, you get a card and you get a card and you get a card. I mean, you're basically like the Oprah of, uh, of card giving. Uh, but essentially, yeah, with that, obviously comes the price. Uh, now, instead, you know, just during their normal draw, obviously they lose two life thanks to your commander. But now they're drawing two cards. And again, there's more price to that with four life. So yeah, your opponent's life totals can go down incredibly quickly with this commander. While yours just keeps skyrocketing because again, whenever you're drawing, you gain two. So thank you, Howling Mind. That would be four life, you know, when my draw step has, you know, two draws now. And of course, Temple Bell's another way to share the love, to have everyone draw a card, tap each player, draws a card, and again, that's two life for you, and two life for each opponent that they no longer have, every single time you tap this artifact. Then of course, Fauna Mythos can take this to another level. It says at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws two additional cards. This can really speed things up. I mean, obviously by filling cards into your hand, you're gonna find even more ways to have your opponents draw even more cards. And yeah, this is six life lost essentially at each of your opponents, you know, draw steps. And it's gonna be six life gained for you. I never thought I would see, you know, mono black group hug essentially, but yeah, it apparently is here. The apocalypse is here with the new shield red. And of course, there are other lovely ways to have players draw a ton of cards with Otherworld Atlas, which has tap put a charge counter on it, and tap each player draws a card free charge counter on Otherworld Atlas. I mean, you can just keep building up this higher and higher and higher, and, and of course, I mean, not that Model Black has a ton of ways to untap artifacts, but there are definitely some, you know, and just artifacts themselves. So yeah, if you've got ways to untap some artifacts, great, you can go quicker with this, you know, maybe if you've got ways to get more counters on it with proliferating, great. Regardless, I mean, if you get this, you know, three, four, five counters on it, that is a ton of life gain for you and a ton of life loss for your opponents. Speaking of which, one card that I think, I mean, Teferi's Puzzle Box is pretty expensive these days. Let me check real quick. Actually, less expensive than I thought. It's like four, five, six bucks, something around there. But yeah, very, very impactful, this commander. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player puts the cards from their hand on the bottom of their library in any order, then draws that many cards. Basically, everyone just replaces their hand each turn. And, you know, again, with that and withdrawing those cards, you gain a ton of life. Again, let's say you had, you know, seven cards in hand, you got a full grip. Cool. You just gained 14 life just for going to your draw step and replacing your hand. And then, you know, your opponents, well, unfortunately for them, the exact opposite is going to be happening. I mean, just imagine them just losing 14 life for switching out their hand. Speaking of which, Memory Jar. Now, this one I just checked, uh, yeah, th this is uh, the expensive one that I'm bringing up uh, within these cards. It's like $44 or something like that. It's also on the reserve list, so um, it's only going to get more expensive, especially, you know, if this shieldred becomes a decently popular commander. Yeah, this works pretty well with it, and it's going to get quite pricey. Regardless, it has tap, sacrifice, memory jar. Each player sets aside their hand face down, exiles essentially, and then draws seven cards. At end of turn, each player discards their hand and returns the cards that they had exiled. Basically, um, yeah, tap, sacrifice this. Everyone draws seven. So again, you gain 14, your opponents lose 14. And of course, again, if you've got those Underworld Dreams types of cards in play as well, that's even more. And uh, on top of that, of course, I'll talk about even more ways to be even more punishing because, yeah, the apocalypse is officially here with Shieldred. Now, on top of all those lovely artifacts, of course, there's some creatures that can help out as well with Rankle, Master Pranks, and Saison. Rankle has whenever it deals combination to a player, and of course it has flying and haste, so it can easily get through on probably at least one opponent, and it says choose any number. Each player discards a card, each player loses one life and draws a card, each player sacrifices a creature. Obviously, each of these decisions can be very, you know, beneficial to you, but yeah, each player losing a life and drawing a card, Cool, I mean, we really don't care too much about losing life because we have a ton of life to spare. And actually, you know, when we draw that card, we gain two life, so we just basically gain one life, draw a card with this. Whereas our opponents, again, are basically drawing a card, losing three life. Speaking of which, there's Saison, which has at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player loses two life and draws two cards. So again, we, oh no, we lose two life. Well, okay, we drew two cards, so that's gaining four life. So essentially we draw two, gain two, essentially is what that ends up being versus our opponents. Again, uh, lose two life, then draw two cards, and then they lose four more life. So they have lost six life just from this. Yeah, again, like I said, this can add up incredibly quickly and we can take our opponents out in absolutely no time with this kind of a commander. 
Speaking of which, now there aren't many wheels in Mono Black, and in fact, one of the only wheels in Mono Black is Dark Deal, which says each player discards all the cards in their hand that draws that many cards, minus one. Now, with all the cards that we're going to be dishing out to players because we're oh so generous, our opponent's hands are probably going to be pretty full, and, you know, obviously during our turn we can make them even more full, and then we just cast this and everyone gets rid of their hand and draws a ton of cards, and then our opponents lose a lot of life, we gain a lot of life, and everyone's happy! Oh, okay, we're we're the only ones that are happy. We're playing Shieldred. Anyways, the card that I kind of alluded to earlier that is not, okay, technically a combo with Shieldred, but it basically is a combo that is going to take one player out essentially every single time is Peer into the Abyss. Peer into the Abyss is a sorcery for four, black, 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 but it is well worth it because it says target player draws cards equal to half the number of cards in their library and loses half their life round up each time. You probably don't even need to make that player lose half their life with this to actually take them out with Shieldred because, again, this is basically just like, okay, um, you've got, what, like, uh, 80 cards in your library probably. Okay, um, I cast this, I target you, a uh, lovely opponent. Uh, you draw 40 cards. Uh, no, I'm sorry, you lost half your life as well right there, so you go down to 20 or whatnot. And then you just lost 80 life because of Shieldred. So, yeah, I mean, this is essentially, again... Technically not a combo because there are definitely times when this will not take a player out. You know, if a player has an absurd amount of life gain in their deck and they somehow get well above, you know, like a hundred and something, whatever life. Sure, this won't take them out. But the vast majority of the time, yeah, this is going to be a seven mana, you lose spell with Shieldred. So make sure you keep that one in mind. And again, if you are interested in this commander, make sure you pick certain cards up ahead of time. Because, yeah, Peer into the Abyss kind of comboing with this commander, that might go up in price. I mean, even a simple draw spell like Sign and Blood can be incredibly impactful in this stack. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. Now, typically, again, you're going to be targeting yourself with this in most you know, games and most situations. Cool, all right, I draw two, I lose two, but now with Shielder, this is cool, I draw two, and essentially gain two life. Versus, again, if you want to take out an opponent, this is a two-mana target player loses, you know, what, six life spell? Speaking of which, I mean, there are plenty of other cards that have your opponent's draw cards as well, so make sure you're considering them as well, like, you know, Infernal Offering. Choose an opponent, you and that player each sacrifice a creature, each player sacrifice a creature this way draws two cards. And choose an opponent, reanimate creatures. Regardless, drawing two cards, again, is usually seen as an upside for that player, uh, but now it's just basically, you know, sure, okay, you, you got the cards nice, but there's a punishment for that, you lose four life. And of course, another great finisher for this commander can be a card like Damnable Pact. It's a sorcery that costs X black black, and it says target player draws X cards and loses X life. So, yeah, let's say that you put, like, six mana into that X, okay? That player is going to draw six cards, lose six life from this, and then they lose, what, six times two, 12, so they lost 18 life from this one spell. Yeah, this can be a great finisher, or again, a great way for you to draw a ton of cards. Because if in the exact same scenario you actually target yourself with this, you are drawing six, losing six, but gaining 12, so you gain six. Phyrexians, again, are known for, you know, that big advantage for you and a big disadvantage in the opposite way for your opponent, and this Shieldred is no different, and it's an incredibly brutal one. Even some lands can help you out as well, of course, with cards like Mikokoro, Center of the Sea, and Gaia Reach Sanitarium. Mikokoro has paid two tap, each player draws a card, so again, cool! Alright, I draw a card, I gain life. Oh, and, and you all lost life. I'm so sorry. And then Gaia Reach Sanitarium is somewhat similar. Pay two tap, each player draws a card, then discards a card. So yeah, even with looting, your opponents are going to be feeling the pain. And of course, keep in mind, with that, with any of their draw spells or with any of their looting effects, etc, 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 they are going to be punished for those. So not just, you know, your own cards that we're talking about already that, you know, are benefiting your opponents technically, you know, by having them draw cards and, you know, punishing them for those draws. Again, any kind of draw spell that they have is going to hurt them. So if your friend has a wheel deck and they love their wheel deck, well, maybe this commander is a great one to kind of counter that wheel deck because now every single time they wheel, they're going to be in a lot of pain. Speaking of pain, well, we can double up on our opponent's pain with cards like Warlock Class and Wound Reflection. Warlock Class, while well, the level 3 says at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn. And Wound Reflection is more of like a perpetual effect. At the beginning of each end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn. So with Wound Reflection, yeah, if you can utilize cards during your turn to have your opponents draw cards, great. That can also have them lose a ton of life. And of course, Wound Reflection is just you know, simply better in you know, this situation, but yeah. All the pain that you inflicted on them for drawing those cards is doubled thanks to this and your opponents aren't going to last very long because of that. 
And speaking of additional pain, let's talk about cards like Psychosis Crawler, Sanguine Bond, and Exquisite Blood. Psychosis Crawler says whenever you draw a card, each boat loses one life. So this is kind of the other end of things, right? You're like, all right, uh, I'm just gonna be drawing more and more cards and it benefits me by gaining life. But now even when I'm drawing cards, I'm also punishing my opponents further. So whether I'm drawing or you're drawing, you are in pain. Speaking of which, Sanguine Bond says whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. This can be incredibly deadly with this commander. Again, you're going to be able to gain a ton of life in absolutely no time. And when you do so, you can target the player that you want to take out the quickest. I mean, they're not going to last very long with them already losing life whenever they draw. And then when you draw, you are having them lose life too. Or, you know, you can just take everyone out, you know, obviously the Exquisite Blood in the combination, you know, with Sanguine Bond. Whenever opponent loses life, you gain that much life. Obviously, this card's a bit more expensive, but yeah, still very good with this commander because, yeah, even without Sanguine Bond, it's just, okay, my opponents, they're losing a ton of life. I'm gaining even more life. This is getting ridiculous. And speaking of ridiculous, well, one commander in particular that is really going to want Shieldred in its deck is Nekusar the Mind Razor. Nekusar says at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Nekusar the Mind Razor deals one damage to that player. So Nekusar, you know, punishes your opponents for drawing cards, and now they're punished further with Shieldred. So now every single time they draw a card, they're losing three. And of course, Nekusar, you know, gives them an extra draw, you know, during their draw step. Great, good for them. Essentially, then, what, that's six life lost because of that, where, you know, you're going to be gaining four life on your turn? So, yeah, Nekosar could definitely utilize Shieldred, and, and again, actually, on the other end of things, if your, you know, friend does have an Nekosar deck, cool, run Shieldred against them, because they're going to be the ones that are not liking the wheels then. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Shieldred the Apocalypse. Yeah, this is a really brutal, pretty low to the ground commander. Again, the previous Shieldred was what, seven mana in the original Phyrexia? And yeah, this one is just four. You can get it down pretty early and pretty often and your opponents are gonna be in a lot of pain, whereas you are gonna be just loving life, well, loving gaining a ton of life that is. And yeah, there are a ton of ways that players draw a lot of cards and to make things go very, very quickly. Or, you know, you can just one-shot an opponent, or again, I should say the vast majority of opponents in the vast majority of situations <laughs> with Peer into the Abyss. And again, like that card, and like I mentioned the other cards, if you are interested in building around this commander, please, 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 please check out that link in the description below. Because again, when players are excited about a brand new commander, they typically don't wait, you know, just for uh, all the spoilers to be done and for the set to actually come out to potentially, you know, get cards to build around it. So prices can increase for cards that work well with that commander. And of course, make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for even more exciting quick takes and spoilers. And now I'm probably going to get myself uh, another cup of coffee today because, yeah, spoiler season is back. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player Affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Music